going to take us through till um, the whole daf. So it starts right here. If you weren't following until now, this is a good place to start. It's a, sort of a new concept. Hikve Saddam. If someone co- coagulates, it causes the blood to coagulate, to, to harden. Ba'achlo. And then he eats it. Or he melts fat, begumu, and he drinks it. So, chayev. He's chayev for that. Now, you're not allowed to eat blood, and you're not, allowed, you're not allowed to drink blood, you're not allowed to eat fat. So, the forbidden fat. The forbidden fat. So, whether he, conge- even if he, co- if he congealed the blood, or he melted the fat, both of them are chayev. The Gemara says on this, we can understand, it works well, it's appropriate to say that if you congeal the blood, coagulate the blood, and then you eat it. So because you did that, you hardened it, you turned it into a food. And the size of a food of eating is kazayas. I don't know if this is a big deal, but the, by the blood it says that he ate it. Right. And by the fat it says that he swallowed it. Right. There's well, it there. is because it's going to be drinking. It's a, it's, a, it's a valid point. Here, we're talking about that he made the blood hard and therefore he ate it. By the fat, he melted it and then he drank it. So, so the um, opposite of, of what the way it regularly yeah. is. So, we said we understand why the blood you're going to be chayev. Elohim ches achilav gamu achilak sivbe. When it says do not do not eat fat, we're talking about eating it. But here he did not eat it. He didn't eat it, he drank it. So why is he chayev? Amr Ishlakish. Ishlakish says, Amr Kra, Pasik says nefesh. The Pasik that talks about not to eat nefesh, Vinikusa nefesh ahi, or nefesh, uh, no soul should eat. It says nefesh. The rabbi says, it's coming to include, that word includes someone that drinks. <coughs> because drinking also satisfies the soul. I'm sorry, but the, the Mishnah says that he, he ate the blood. He well, ate the well, blood, right? but he drank, or he swallowed the fat. Which come, but, so now he's not, uh, um, when it says, don't, what's the, what, in, the, in the Torah, when it says, it says don't eat blood, yeah. it doesn't say don't drink blood. Right. So... So he, he ate, ate it. He, he so ate. We, we said that's good. That's fine. That's fine. Right. What about the drinking of the fat? So we have a special pasuk that tells me that drinking fat is also prohibited, even though it says eating there. Wow. But it's, okay. it says nefesh. It's coming to tell me that also that is is um, chayav. Tanya nami gavi chametz ke gavna. We have a brisa that says the same thing about chametz. Take a loaf of bread and you dissolve it. Himcho, you dissolve it. Begamu. And then you drink the this loaf of dissolved bread. Im chametzu, if it's chametz on shkaris, you eat chametz on Pesach. It's karis, very severe punishment. Im matzehi, this is an interesting question. It's gebrachs. <laughs> it's gebrachs, <laughs> very gebrachs. So ein adam yotze ba yedei chavasu Pesach. You don't fulfill your eating matzah on Pesach. You didn't actually eat matzah. You drank. You drank it. That's not considered eating. People without teeth. Maybe would would try to do this. That's moody. Right. Bishlaima. There was this uh, person that comes to collect. This was a business. Uh, uh, his, his, fa- his father, when they invented the blender, his father was a big Talmud Chacham. So his father was all impressed. He said it used to be it take, would take him 20 minutes to eat. He'd have a salad and fish and, and soup and all of this. And uh, he would w- take away time from learning. But now that there's a blender, you can just put it all in, and you drink it, and I have so much more time to learn. <laughs> so, so, um, someone dissolves this bread, so he doesn't, or if he dissolves matzah, he doesn't get the, uh, the mitzvah of eating matzah. So we say, Bishlam and matzah, he, he understand that case, he don't get the mitzvah of eating matzah. Pesach. You don't fulfill the mitzvah because lechemayni amar achman. The Torah says it's a poor man's bread. But I love lechemayni. This is not a poor man's bread. It's not bread. Ella im chametz u'anish karis. 
But if it's chametz, you get kares. We're quoting the brisa, the, the Mishnah that says that. The brisa that says that. Achilak sivde. It says don't do not eat chametz. You're not supposed to own it either. But that for that there's no kares. Eating chametz. He didn't eat it. He drank it. Right. Sounds like the students in the class. You tell them don't eat. I'm not eating. I, I'm, I'm drinking. Uh, I'm just chewing. Right. You know, it's like, loophole. <laughs> the future lawyers. Right. So Amar Rish Lakish, Rish Lakish says Amar Kra Nefesh L'Rabbis Esa Shaisa. No, we have another pasuk over there that says Nefesh, and that tells me also that drinking it is also the same prohibition. But Tanya Nami Gabi Nevela Seiftar. It says about eating a bird that's a kosher bird but wasn't slaughtered. Special laws. Ki Gavna. It says the same thing that Himcho Ba'or. If somehow you took the bird and you dissolved it in fire, you turned it into a uh, a liquid. But overheat, you, like melted it down until it turned into just a, a like a soup sort of thing. So that's tummy. It was still going to give off tuma, but pechama. But if it melted in the sun, that's tar. Ba'avinamba. We asked one second. Achilak sivde. You have to eat it, and here you're not eating it. Here you're drinking it because you dissolved it. So now we have another pasuk that drinking it is also considered. Uh, eating in this case because it says nefesh and drinking is satisfying like eating so ihachi nami so why in the sun is it not the same uh, the same tuma says bechamis shuchi misrach over there it spoils you can't put your meat in the sun right that's uh, the bacteria and, but uh, over a pot in a, over in a, in a pot in a fire that you can do utrichi we need each of these, if we just had three laws telling me that dissolved foods are considered eating, not drinking. Or <coughs> even if they're drinking, it's still considered eating. Uh, the three laws were chilev, chametz, and nevela. Nevela by the bird. We need all of them. Dikas rachman chilev, if we would only say this halacha by chilev, that drinking is just as bad. So chametz layasim meaning I won't be able to learn chametz from it. Shekain layhei salei shasa kosher, because chelav doesn't have a time that it's permitted. Chametz does. I would say chametz is more doesn't have that strictness. Nevela layasim meaning I won't be able to learn nevela from chelav either. Shekain on karis. I would say that chelav is karis. Nevela is not karis. So chelav is the only one that has that stringency. Because the rachman chametz, if we would only say chametz, that drinking is like eating. So chelav leyasmi, I won't learn chelav. She came lehotem echlalik. Chametz is totally forbidden, but chelav depends on which uh, animal. Sometimes chelav is permissible. The Gemara is viewing that as a leniency here. Almost identical to we did this once before. Yeah, with the... yeah. You go through that. You, each one has a leniency. You can't learn, make these comparisons. Nevela leyasmi, I can't learn nevela from it. She came on karis because. Chametz is karis. Nevela isn't karis. Nevela is just a negative prohibition. Because Rachmana ben Nevela, this seems to be the most lenient. This we should. This should work. So Hanach I can't. Won't. Can't learn from that. Shekain mitama. Nevela gives off a tuma. The chelav and the uh, and the chametz don't give off tuma. So the Gemara concludes that chadam chadam leyasya. You can't learn one from one. Tesi chadam itarti. I'm going to have to learn one from two. If I make the right combination here. I'll be able to combine them, that I'll be able to learn the third thing. Hi, Tasty, which one should we learn out? So, Leilich the Rachmana ben Nevela. That's the wrong choice. That's the most lenient. Um, don't, don't say, don't let the Torah not write Nevela. If it tastes in and you'll learn from Chametz and Chelev. It says, Malahanach Shekin on Iskaris. No way, those are way too strict. Over there, drinking is like eating. So, the Gemara tries again. Leilich the Rachmana ben Chametz. So, don't say by Chametz. And you learn from Chelev in Nevela. It says, Malahanach yeah. Shekin Laisalem Shasa Kaisha. No, those have a strictness also. Chametz used to be permissible. So that's a leniency. We're going to say that drinking Chametz uh, is not considered drinking Chametz. It's not considered eating Chametz. Leilach Dev Rachmana Bechelev. So don't say Chelev. This is interesting. I could learn from Nevela and Chelev. No, I'm sorry. Leilach Rachman and Bechelev. I learned from Nevela and Chametz. Ma'ala Hanach Shekin Lehotem Echlolam. Says no. Chelev doesn't have. Chelev has a leniency, 
that it's like that it's it only applies in certain animals. It doesn't apply in all animals. Taimer bechelav shotim mechlali, but chelav has these other <coughs> these other uh, these certain animals that it doesn't apply to, like wild animals. Mind you, which case is chelav permissible? Ile mechelav behema. If we say that we're talking about the chelav of an animal, legavaya. That's brought to the. That's brought on as a carbon. Now let's do it like this. If we're talking about what does it mean hotter mechlali, what is the leniency that we find by chelav? I've I've been explaining it that there's an animal. It doesn't apply to all animals. The Gemara is now suggesting it doesn't know yet what the, what the answer is. They're just going through it. The Gemara suggests that maybe hotter mechlali means that I can take the chelav and put it on the mezbeach. So there's a leniency here, I see here. It's not totally forbidden. Chelav gets some use. It goes to, the, to God. <coughs> the Gemara says, one second. Nevela nami yishtri. I have a leniency by nevela. Where do you see that? Malika soif legavaya. If I'm bringing a chata soif or an oila soif, I make it a nevela. I, I, I shecht it with the fingernail. That's normally a nevela. And nevertheless, there's a leniency. So we'll, we'll say, well, you can't say that you can't learn chelav from nevela because chelav has this leniency. It's not true. Nevela has the same leniency, and nevertheless, drinking ne- drinking nevela gives off a tumah. The same thing with chelav. It should be uh, aser. <coughs> Rather, we're talking about the chelav of a wild animal. That that's lenient. One second. Nevela nami yistri malika bechatas oif lekayinim. What about uh, we chatas uh, oif uh, is eaten, even though malika is done and it's nevela. But nevertheless, the Kayanim are allowed to eat it. The Gemara says, What you said was correct. We're talking about that the leniency of Chelev is that it doesn't apply to wild animals. The Kakashalach Kayanim. Ay, Nevela also has a leniency. Kayanim are allowed to eat Nevela on the bird of Achatas Oif that Malika has done. It says, Kayanim, Misholchan Gavaya Kazachu. Kayanim, they eat from the table of God. That cannot be considered a leniency. That's a special case. Okay, I think I should stop here. Even though we're in Just the middle. Of it. Why? Yeah, but it, it's, it's, it's like well, the Danya. Is that going to start? It's, it's, it's going to go on like that. So why by a chayyeh considered chayyeh when chayyeh is forbidden? By a chayyeh, 